Thank you very much. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, I have been warned to be brief, and fortunately that will be somewhat easy because uh, <laughs> Jamaica has been referred to as the land of wood and water and no statistics. So um, <laughs> from that point of view, you won't be getting any recitation of figures and uh, I won't be <laughs> expected to answer any serious questions in that regard. Uh, Jamaica's problems in housing may be traced back in a certain sense to the problems of building itself. Jamaica is in the tropics in the Caribbean and it is an island which one falls within the earthquake zone. We've had severe earthquakes there followed by a great loss of life. We've subject to, we are subject to hurricanes. We have had experiences of severe hurricanes accompanied by loss of life. The building out of wood is discouraged because unless you can get properly treated wood or uh, special woods which are termite resistant, housing will not last even the life of a normal mortgage because it will be termite ridden and eaten down so that uh, the problems of building, the problems of housing people are first affected by the problems of building. And with these constraints which I mentioned, the question of housing the poor becomes somewhat rather difficult. Because if you are to give someone shelter which will stand up to the rigors of, of nature in the area, uh, you are looking mainly at concrete structures. You are looking at something which has to be permanent in order to attract good insurance rates and also to uh, attract even a, a decent mortgage. So with that as a background, we realize immediately that housing the very poor is something difficult unless you are going to go in for shelter which you will expect to go down in case of a calamity and, be, and have it replaced shortly thereafter, which isn't, I think, a very smart way to do it. Um, in addition to this, I think it may be of interest to note that the only statistic which I would dare to quote at this moment is that the per capita income in the island is running just under $1,000. Now that is so much better than many other developing countries, but when you look at uh, housing overall, it's a very small amount if you put it in the setting that I set out before. Now we have our urban pressures, migration from the rural areas into the city and the problems of housing are essentially problems in the urban communities. Uh, we have substandard areas, blighted areas and we have squatted areas and it may be interesting for you to know that uh, a recent survey which we conducted there indicates that squatting is a, when I say an urban phenomenon, I mean it's not practiced by the people who migrate in to the city. Squatting seems to be an art developed by the city dweller. A man who has been living in the city or has been born there. The urban migrant generally gets into areas where he can reside with families or try to, to uh, get into some more legitimate form of house occupancy. Squatting has a distinct urban, if you will pardon the expression, smart aleck approach to it. It's generally a smart urban fellow who seizes land and we found of course squatters who will have other types of accommodation elsewhere capturing sites, using them and using the other accommodation as a means of income. Now, my particular province in all this is the development of cooperative housing. And I'll just tell you briefly, Mutual Housing Services, the company which I represent, was founded in 1968. In those days, I was still a civil servant in the Ministry of Housing. And uh, the then Minister of Housing decided that in the overall attack on housing conditions in the country, he wanted a cooperative housing input. Cooperatives in Jamaica had made 
uh, shall I say, a successful impression as far as credit unions were concerned. They were growing and it was shown that the people, if given a chance, could do a lot for themselves. The United States assistance was sought and uh, the Foundation for Cooperative Housing of Washington advised the government to set up an independent company. It should be a spin-off of the Ministry of Housing, but it should be independent in its, in its own right to develop housing cooperatives. Now, this we have been doing since 1969, and since my retirement from the government in that year, I have been associated with this company. The idea being that uh, cooperative housing would be a wonderful means of providing first communities normally cheaper than those that could be provided by private developers who are interested in profits and also cheaper communities as far as the continuing or running cost of these is concerned. Many communities, uh, or shall I say, many people in the lower incomes are often deluded into believing that the real cost of a house is just the first cost and the completely oversight, the running cost, the continuing cost and that has an even greater effect on what the community eventually turns out to be and this is where we thought and we have found that the cooperative approach is excellent as far as building better communities is concerned. We have not in Jamaica embarked on anything like aided self-help in cooperatives. We had experiments in aided self-help, self-build self as it's called by groups uh, when I was in the Ministry of Housing in part of the public housing programs. Well, unfortunately, I don't think we were sufficiently well tutored in administering these things and the first two experiments were not to be considered as successes. Now, at the moment, with the aid of the World Bank, Jamaica is embarking on aid, not aided self-help, but uh, sites and services projects, where sites are being provided by the government with all the essential services, water, sewage, electricity, and things like that. And uh, core units are put on these sites, which are leased to specially chosen people, the method of choice relating strictly to incomes and need. And uh, these people are encouraged to finish the unit so provided to meet their particular family needs. Now, the first one of these communities has not yet been fully occupied. As a matter of fact, before leaving Jamaica, I learned that the occupancy was just about to be started. So it, we are interested there to see how this will work out as it is felt that there is a tremendous room for this. Those of us who went through the earlier aided self-help uh, programs are still a little bit uh, weary and we are watching with interest to see how it will come out. But if it does come through successfully, it's going to mean a tremendous change in our approach to housing the very, the very, very low incomes that we have to deal with. Uh, we find, if I could just get down to the end of what I have to say, that uh, cooperative housing has a tremendous role to play. At the moment, our cooperative housing efforts are geared at the group of people who fall above those considered needing subsidies in public housing, and that's top of the public housing range and the bottom of the private developer range in the island. The private developer will come down only to a certain level which is determined to a great extent by the sources of finance. Financiers will interest themselves in investing in housing mortgages down to a certain level. Below this the problems of collection come in and uh, the normal finance agencies are reluctant to go down there. We find, however, that the cooperative movement is uh, quite an instrument 
in encouraging these agencies to go lower down in the scale. So that little gap, which the Puerto Ricans, for instance, refer to quite aptly as the, the ham of the sandwich, that group in between there, which represents a large portion of the labor force, the working force, is the prime target of our cooperative housing approach at the moment. And we hope to make a significant contribution to, Jamaica, to relieving the Jamaican housing shortage there. This is not to say that we've avoided going down into the area where subsidies become necessary, because with the assistance of the government, we have gone down to an area where the government has cooperated with my company in providing housing where subsidies are needed, and the government extends the subsidy alone. Now, one of the added advantages of this is that we find that the cooperative as an instrument for housing is being recognized as of great assistance in recovery of investments, that is, in the collection process, because the normal housing cooperative society has a self-policing mechanism. It's, it's naturally, it's built that way. And uh, when the responsibility for repayment of mortgage investment is uh, shared jointly, you see the people themselves, rather than an external force, will insist on repayments being made. And in distinction or contradistinction to the situation in public housing where there's a tendency to believe whatever you can get off the government, take it and move, there is a feeling now that if you don't pay up, the rest of us will have to. So we're going to see to it that you pay. So this has, this, the introduction of this feature, of course, means that the private agencies, many of which are getting socially conscious now, um, the, the investment from these agencies is being drawn, attracted more into the lower incomes through the introduction of a cooperative collecting mechanism. And we have great hopes for this. It also means a saving in the government purse because if you get low enough, you can get the private, private agencies putting up the major portion of the finance, whereas government would only be required to, uh, to meet the subsidy costs where these are approved. I uh, think that my time is up now, and um, I'm grateful to you.